Hey, what's going on, guys? Double One Eight Set Shadow here. We dodged it. The standard format, effective April twenty first, will see no changes to its format. V Premium and Premium have seen changes, but I mostly cover standard, so I will not be going into those into depth. Suffice to say, there are some pretty hefty shifts on Bermuda and Gear Chronicle across those formats, given they've been dominant over there. But standard is not seeing any changes, so to go over that, the big contenders here are going to be the Chrono Jet deck in general and Brainwash Swirler, where the original restriction was either you play GG or Brainwash. And we still have quantities here sitting around 30, the SP is still over 100. The other one was Eva with Combine Rusher, where Combine Rusher is now still over $30, and the $90 FFR copies are still available. Will they apply those restrictions down the line? I would imagine so, as once the... Especially once the Chrono Jet deck is out of circulation, then I don't think Bushiroad will have any incentive to keep Chrono Jet at the top in order to sell product further, so they will likely implement that restriction, or potentially an even more severe restriction down the line but we'll have to see what happens there. And then, going into the main market watch, first thing I want to cover is a card from set 8, Self Dragon on Precedent, which is Shoto Doji and Tamayura support, where if it's placed by a card ability, you Soul Blast and draw, and then if two or more of your cards were put from rear to soul, this unit gets 10k. So it's a 23k attacker on the second condition, which is... Mainly what I want to talk about today, because this deck, this card is seeing play in another deck in Japan right now, revolving around this card, which we don't have yet, Phantasmic Stealth Fiend Megalonazuchi. This is a generic Dragon Empire card, though while I say it's generic, it's more specific to stealth cards, which this one is a stealth card, unprecedented, but essentially... The skill on this one requires you to put two rear guards into your soul from board, and you counterblast to search for two cards with the same card name as this unit. You call them to rear guard and give them 5k. And then if your opponent's vanguard's grade 3, your opponent or all your rear guards with stealth in their card name can attack from the back row. They also have to have the same name as this unit. But if you're wondering about that same name clause, it's got this first effect where you bind a card from your soul, and then this card gets the name of all face of grade 1 or greater cards in the bind zone with stealth. So progressively, this card will get more and more names and allow you to keep attacking from the back row with more cards, which is where the second effect comes into play here. The first effect doesn't do well at all. But this card will... This card has $1 lower listings right now, so with anticipation that we'll eventually get Megalonozuchi, you would probably want to have a playset of this if you want to give that a try. It does have a few tops at local level in Japan, and seems like a pretty cool deck in general. And then the FFR is just under $20 to start off, and then we're looking at around 2025 afterward. So, still not a bad price point. Once we have Megalonozuchi, though, I would anticipate that this card's price will increase somewhat. Abent Robust is also from set 8, and is running out of quantities on the double R side, where we're down to 16. And then the FR has 13 copies right now, which is still pretty good for an FR in general. Essentially, this card allows you to search orders that you already have set, and then if you have two or more of the same order, and this card attacks, it gets 10k until the end of the battle. So this is an alternate to this is an alternate to combine rusher in the event that Eva does get the choice restriction put on it later down the line. But it's also just generic brand gate support, which can be used it would probably be used more with Wellstra, potentially even with Avagarda. But it's a good tech option to consider when building a brand gate deck. Balcate Performer, we haven't talked about this one in a while. But it's fallen out somewhat, 
and now we're looking at about $25 for the base rarity and then $35 for the FR. It's still generic, so even though it's not seeing as much play, and with all the different generic soul charge mechanics that Dark State has, this one is also a set 7 card, which increases its price much higher than the others. Plant tokens. We, yeah, so plant tokens have gotten a lot of printings in standard format, where we've started from set 5, we just had another copy round in set 8, and then set 9 just printed a few more of them. The hollow foil from set 5 is still close to $10 if you want to pick it up, but market price is still severely under that. And as for the common tokens from set 5, you have to remember for these tokens, these have alternate backsides, which increases their value. They don't have the vanguard backside, they'll either have lore about the glitters, or they'll have one of those going first, going second backsides. Same with the Momoke tokens. But the Momoke token is currently set 5 and set 8. So one less printing overall than the plant tokens. And when it comes to the Momoke token, you only need one anyway. Since the way, the way Radlina works, there's only the possibility of having one on the board and never more. The other plant tokens that you can get from V Premium overall have the same stats. Not this one though, as this is supposed to be one of those souped up plant tokens. So this one would not fit the bill if you're trying to play it in place of the standard token. The Minerva Rising version of this token is out of is almost out of stock. We've only got a $4 copy of this. So if you have Minerva Rising tokens, you could probably put those up. I'd say 50 cents to a dollar should be fine. But I don't even understand why this one in particular is sold out. Although, I suppose it makes sense that this one is, given the alternate backsides for the commons for set 5, but I don't understand why the Minerva Rising one is out. On the continued topic of tokens, we also have the Noble Rose token from set 9, which is used with Granvia. This one you should only need one of, and ultimately you can pick it up for 25 cents, 50 cents tops. I wouldn't say you need to pick it up for any more than that. If your local has it in bulk, you could probably just pick it up from there pretty cheap. To wrap up the token conversation, Prod Pollen Raphalos is out of stock right now. Last sold for 15 and 8 and 10. I mean, this card has been creeping up in value over time, so we had been covering it every so often, but it's actually sold out now, and it only has the one printing from set 5 with no SP either. So you'll need to shop around for this one, or if you have copies, I'm sure you could put these up for $10, and it seems like they would sell. Trick Moon, we have the reprint on this one, which is technically harder to get than the original Triple R, but it's cheaper right now. So if you're looking for Trick Moons, I would probably just go for the special reprint if you're looking for base rarity. But the SP has some listings underneath, $30 right now, so if you still want to pick up SPs, I'd say that's not too bad of a price point, given that Trick Moon has been subject to spikes everywhere whenever there's hype for Boss Sagra. Moving over to the other side, Set 10 has released for Japan, and I wanted to go over some initial outlooks for what we've got here. In fact, this has been sitting stale for a little while. Let me refresh this. So let's see. We have five secret rares with the new way of illustrating the characters like an outline as compared to the DSRs where we had the characters on the card. This makes it so that you can more easily see the card art from a distance versus the DSR where the character technically covers the art. It's an interesting style. I just don't like how they zoom in on the characters like this, or zoom in on the units. I prefer them being more full art, but it's always player preference in that case. Mirror of Irina is significantly cheaper than the rest of them though, under 10,000 yen right now, which is still under $100. FFR wise, it kind of follows suit with the secret rares that Trajewel and Unica are probably the most expensive. Zorga is following that, 
And then everything... Huh. And then the Cycler card for Stoichi is higher price on the FFR side. Triple rare wise, let's see. The new Dragon Empire boss, what's his name? Gon Gondeva. Gondeva is starting at 500 yen. Drajuld is still the most expensive at 2000. Then Zorga and Unica. Oh, we also have the Cycler card that, ooh. And the Cycler from Brankgate. Unex <laughs> no, that was kind of to be expected. Eh. <sighs> Cyclers are going to be a lot of money in this set, aren't they? Double R wise. All right. I've been hearing random things about the mask being really shorted in this box. And it's a double R. If it truly is shorted as a double R, I really don't know what to say, especially when you consider how the chalice from set eight was not, sh I don't think it was shorted. It was six to seven per box, which is pretty typical of a double. No, I, no, it, actually it's not now that, that you think about it. So six to seven copies of this per case is definitely shorting it, especially when players want multiple copies of it. Right, that's the other thing is that you can play multiples of this card, if I'm not mistaken. Um... Let me see on the time. Yeah, I don't see a restriction. Yeah, I think you can play four of this, unlike the Chalice, which are only allowed to play one copy, and you can only play it if you're not playing any other regular pieces. Let's take a look at the FRs. Nothing of note, they're mostly 580 yen here for Shuturuma. Chuturuma. It's a Brandgate specific card. I'll have to take a look at that one later. But the FR of the mask is almost 10,000 yen, which is close to the equivalent of $100 over here. And then one of the dragon trees for Stoichia is 780 yen right now. And then these we're not getting, so we're... I mean, we can take a look at them, but I believe they're just Bang Dream alternate triggers, where... You have various art variations of them, which can vary in price, but yeah, Bushiroad gives Japan all these nice little extras that we just never get or they get put off, and so the product gets screwed up. To wrap up today's Market Watch, I do want to cover the Majesty Lord Blaster ride line from set 5, where Majesty Lord himself has three printings. The Triple R is still under $5.00. The SP, we're looking at about 20 and if you want the 10th rare SP, that's not a bad price overall for a piece of Vanguard history that was reprinted into Standard. Blaster Blade himself, of course, the icon of Card 5 Vanguard, or is supposed to be. We're looking at about $7 for the base one, 35 ish for the SP, and if you want the secret rare copy, they are... Sold out to the point of 450, but I am pretty sure. Yeah, last solds on this were 90 and 130, so I can't imagine this selling anytime soon. If you have copies of this, you can probably put those up for a pretty penny. Then Little Sage Marin, the SP is out of stock, where the last sold on this one was 35 and 25 and 23. And to wrap it up, Wingle Braves SP, $50, then we've got 30 So, in terms of the high rarity side for standard Majesty Lord Blaster, the low end is what is running out of stock, but MLB and Blaster Blade himself still have a good amount of quantities. So if you're still looking to pick up MLB high rarity, you're going to have to shop around for a little bit, but at the very least you have some options available to you on TCG Player. Thanks for watching today, guys. I know I did this a day late. It was a combination of the fighter's rule change that I wanted to cover, and also, as I said before, I'm a little constrained for the next two weeks in terms of real life just hitting me. But if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you guys next time.